Oh guys. my gosh. Good shot. Woo. Well, welcome to Southern Colorado, Eastman's Hunting TV today. I'm your host, Ike Eastman, and we're in Southern Colorado mule deer hunting. We're down here trying to find one of those giant mule deer. It's gonna be a fun hunt. It's a rifle hunt down here. It's October, the bucks are rubbed off. This, these, it's one of these deer still has velvet. <clears throat> they have had some problems with e EHD, so hopefully we can drum up one of these and redline the fun meter. So come along as we find a giant Colorado mule deer. Down here, Southern Colorado, hunting mule deer. Obviously these bucks aren't exactly what we're looking for. Nice mule deer, but they're just a couple generations too young. It's probably a three, four year old deer looking for something a little, that next step up. It's been a weird year. It seems like we're missing a generation, that six, seven, eight year old deer. We were talking about it and it could be ED or EHD took out a generation of these bucks. And so that, you know, that six, seven or eight, seven and eight for sure, your old deer are gone. Um, we haven't found one. We've been hunting four days. We haven't found one that's been that age. Now, I did find a really old buck and it's a buck that we filmed five or six years ago when we were hunting down here with Steve Hornady. And we, it's a white tail. We call him the white tail buck because somehow the black tip on his tail is gone, missing, like froze off or a predator got a hold of it or something. And so he's really noticeable. Plus he's really, really tall. You know, in his prime, when, when we were hunting him with Steve, he was a Boone and Crockett deer and he's just re regressed. He's probably in that mid 170s. Beautiful buck, but an old. I mean, he's gotta be 13. He's old, old buck. If we can't find something else though, we'll, we'll keep, him our, keep him in our back pocket because he's an old battler. So let's go see what else we find. So Johnny, we found some water back here hunting mule deer. And over the course of a couple days, well, you have a master's in wildlife biology. You see these bucks that have all kinds of nasty antlers. You know, they're just, they're cactus bucks. So explain to me how that happens and what happens. EHD is uh, a hemorrhagic disease. It's a virus. And these standing water pools from late spring to early fall you have the little midge flies or no seam bugs that people talk about. They're the ones you will get around your neck and yeah. hug you. Well, they will actually feed on these deer and they really hit bucks the hardest when they're growing their antlers and they're soft tissue there in early summer. These hatch on these standing puddles of water and it doesn't take a lot of water for these well, you, insects. You can see the mosquito larvae in there now and there's not, I mean, there's not a gallon of water in there. It would probably be interesting if you even put a swab a microscope and see what all we did have in <laughs> one little deal. So you're saying don't drink it. <laughs> probably don't drink it. But you know, and it's common throughout the United States, but we noticed it up here on this particular ranch probably 10 years ago in Southern Colorado and started seeing these, you know, malformed racks on these bucks. And we kept going, what is going on? And Finally, CSU did a study to make sure we knew what was happening. There wasn't some sort of chemical they got into or the, or you know, something. we're, yeah, we're at elevation. Maybe something changed. Something changed. This burned. Or... Yep. And as, uh, you know, they did that, we found out that these bucks were actually survivors of EHD. A lot of times EHD hits white till you'll have a 90% mortality. Mule deer don't seem to be that, that high. We will find an occasional dead deer due to EHD, but the bad thing when it hits these bucks, 
the racks they can get well you saw some this oh this yeah, week. yeah just really weird just spiky knobs cactus type bucks but they become sterile uh, you'll see them in December still in full velvet and they could care less if the does are around I mean it completely knocks their so, testosterone level so not only is it affecting the, the deer population one deer at a time but it's also affecting the breeding population so you're not getting these bucks you know the genes that that buck had before he got affected by it passing down so it's narrowing the pool actually it, it is narrowing the pool and then they'll get sick they'll usually run a fever they'll lose appetite some of them will end up dying from that disease that's why a lot of times if you have a summer where EHD is really bad you will find deer around water holes because they're running a fever and they'll go try to get in it to break that fever and oh. you'll end up seeing them dead right there around the water. <clears throat> so you're saying soft tissue, is it is it their, when they're in velvet? In velvet. So they're, they're, they're feeding tissue. on their velvet? Yep. Well, they can easily, you know, that velvet, when it's growing, it is full of blood vessels. Right. I mean, it's fresh growth coming out. And that's out what the black flies are after. And they get into all of that. It's easy tissue, but those antler growth early in summer, it's easy for those flies to penetrate then they pass the virus into that buck by feeding on that buck's tissue. If you harvest one of these animals that has, you know, that's apparently had this EHD, is it going to affect the meat at all? I mean, can you consume it? You can consume it. It's not a uh, human past organism that we're going to have to worry about. So we won't get it from the black flies? We're not going to get it from the black flies. Okay. Does it affect elk? Or is it, it does. It can affect elk. It can affect white tail, it can affect mule deer. So the deer. deer the deer family. Yep, the deer family. But it's really, really more fatal in white tail. Well I appreciate it. That's interesting. Interesting stuff. So now when you folks, when you're out there and you find one of these bucks, uh, don't be afraid to, to take it. Um, and uh, harvest him and, and eat the meat and now we know where it comes from. Exactly. And we also know not to drink that puddle of water because that is gross. Those little those little <laughs> those little larvae in there just swimming around. Waiting to hatch and bite somebody. Well, hopefully this one dries up. Some nice bucks. Some hard horns, some of them stripped already. One's got velvet on it still. Well, two of them got velvet. I don't see anything that really trips my trigger, but nice bucks. This is the area that uh, that cheater buck was in. He's with these bucks at one point, but I don't see him. Well, that one's got, that one's got some cool stuff on him. That's, he's got a cheater. Wrong side, wrong deer, but that's a neat, neat little basket buck. Look, he's got two cheaters and that one split. Not real nervous, are they? You guys see that cheater buck? You got two cheaters. Yeah. Now we'll back out of here. Nothing we want. Let's see if we can find our cheater buck. So one of the things that we use as a tool is Onyx Maps. Now, I'm looking for a specific buck, and what I've done is pinpointed the places that I saw him. I've seen him bed down a couple of different places, and I've seen him, but I just couldn't get him, get stalked on him for whatever reason. The wind was blowing. One time I was gonna lose light, so there's no point in stalking. I mean, just tons of different reasons. But what I did is I did Onyx. So I put markers every place I've seen him, so that I know, okay, he frequents this place, I can go back there and see if he's in that spot. 
or somewhere close to that. I also put markers in here where I've seen the bucks that he was with, but I didn't see him. So one of those tools in the field, and you can download the map so that you don't have to have cell service with this. And I've used this in the past, so it'll work. Hopefully this will help me find the cheater bucks, we call them. So I don't see him right now. I did find his bucks, but I haven't found the little EHD buck yet, which seems like every time we've seen him, that EHD buck's with him. So we'll keep looking. Welcome back. Our search for the big cheater buck continues. We have put our SIG optics to work, but we have not drummed up that needle in the haystack. Sure, that's him, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Freight, tra freight train to those rocks. Hopefully you didn't bust that cheater off. No. <laughs> exactly. Congrats. Oh my gosh. Good shot. Woo. Good Woo. shot. Another Colorado buck down. Look at that. When I saw that in front of the bush, I said, that's it, he's dead. That is just a good, mature buck. 
It's exactly what conservation management is about. You take the mature bucks out of the out, <clears throat> you can manage your herd a lot more accurately. Good lord. <clears throat> Man, I, I'm piling through the rocks. I went, oh, please don't bust the cheater off. You know, I came down here and this definitely, this buck was definitely on the hit list. We searched and searched. We found him a couple times, weren't able to get on him due to where he was laying or the wind or, you know, a ton of different problems, as is hunting. I mean, that's just how hunting is. Finally, we found this buck. He was literally 30 yards from us, boogered up this hill, and I was able to take a 200-yard shot and, and put him down. One shot, one kill, the Savage 6.5 Creedmoor with the Hornady uh, ELDX Precision. Just punched him right through the shoulder. And uh, one shot, one kill is amazing. I tell you, there's a lot of things in life that you worry about and, and I was really worried. We, we lost this buck for a couple days and I, we couldn't find him. He was hanging out with another EDHD buck, kind of had knobs on him and all kinds of weird stuff and we could find all the other bucks, but him and that EDHD, and, and it just happened. We'd come, you know, rolling around and there he was. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a scatter to get, get things set up and get it done. But he really wasn't worried. It was kind of odd. He was just feeding along. The hardest part, it was so many bucks that the hardest part was making sure it was the right buck. And as soon as I saw that awesome cheater, lights out. So it's a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me today. And remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you next week right here on Eastman's Hunting TV.